there. I promised I would be back with this project in my last video and here I am a few days later than I had intended. But I am excited to show you this. This is a tutorial that's been on my blog for um, a while, a couple years I think, because we made them as cast gifts for my daughter during recital season. She's a ballerina. And what it is is a small drawstring pouch and she uses it for like um, bobby pins and things. But I use one for jewelry when I travel. I could even use one in my sewing room. You could keep like your wonder clips in it or your quilting pins. Right now I have them in a tin. But this would be good for that too. Any little things, these also make really great gifts for um, little girls or little boys if you make them in the right fabrics. So this is a very simple project. All you need is a fat quarter, two fat quarters of fabric. If you're not gonna use fat quarters, then you need a half a yard each. And you can actually get three pouches out of a half yard of two different fabrics. So if you don't buy fat quarters, get a half yard because you need the full 18 inches. And you need some cord for the drawstring. I forgot to get mine, I'll have to go get that. Or ribbon works too. And of course, I created a printable version of this tutorial. So you can, for your convenience, you can just read it and look at the photos so you don't have to refer back to the video every time. And that version includes this pattern piece. Mine's just a scrap, but yours will look nicer, I promise. So if you want to get that, you can head over to my shop. I'll link that in the description below. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new tutorials. I try to be beginner friendly around here and shop around in my pattern shop for more patterns that you can make using these videos. And those patterns over there are mostly just really convenient because you know, when people post tutorials on a video or just on their blog, it's hard to go back and you, it's hard, you can't print it from a blog very easily. So that's why I create those so that you can spend a few dollars and have that pattern and store it in your sewing binder or however you like to store patterns and have it for keeps. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I've chosen these fat quarters. I actually subscribe to the fat quarter of the month club at Annie's. And so I'll put a link to that in the description below because it's been really fun to get fabrics. This is the one they sent last month. Um, this one reminds me of my sister, I think it's pretty. Um, another one they sent, I sent to my mom because it reminded me of her. So every month in the mail, I get this collection of fat quarters and it's always a surprise. It's so fun. So I will link you to that. And I'll also link to this specific fabric collection in case it's called Backyard Blooms. I'm gonna just use these two fabrics because I think they're pretty. So you need one fat quarter for the outside of the pouch and one for the lining. I think these look cute together. So let me go iron this really quick. I'm actually going to iron it into fourths. So I'm going to iron it this way. I'm going to press a crease here and then I'm going to press a crease here. Okay, I've pressed my fabrics into fourths. So I pressed it hot dog style and then hamburger style. If you do not have the pattern piece, all you need to do is create, you need a 13 inch circle in diameter. So I have, I keep a compass in my sewing room and I spread this out to six and a half inches and created a quarter circle on the corner of a piece of paper. And I'm going to place this on the folded edge of my fabric and I'm going to cut around it. You can pin it if you want to, of course. Okay, and then you have extra. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Make sure you're placing the pattern on the spot where they're both folded edges, not over here. Then you'll have a half circle. Now I'm gonna open these up and since I pressed creases into it, it'll be easy to line them up. I'm going to place these right sides together. Line up your creases. I'm going to place some pins around. And I'm gonna go sew this using a quarter inch seam and I'm going to leave a small opening for turning maybe just a couple inches right here. Okay, here we go. Okay, I've sewn my circle all the way around. I left this opening here, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this right side out. Get my chopstick and run it along the inside. 
until it's nice and smooth and I'm gonna go press it very flat. So my edges are nice and crisp. The chopstick is really helpful so you don't get like pointy spots. I'm gonna press this side that I left open as if I had sewn it. I'm just gonna press these inward. Okay, here's my opening. It's a little tricky to press those under because it's a curved edge, but just try to follow the curve the best you can. Okay, there's actually only a few more steps. This is a very simple project. So we're gonna th sew three rows of stitching all the way around this. Where the first is going to be right next to the edge. I'm gonna top stitch it. Okay, so my row of top stitching also sewed my opening closed. That's why you need it right on the edge. The next row is gonna be an inch in from the edge. So it's going to go right here. And I'm just going to place a piece. If, you, if your sewing machine doesn't have a one inch mark, I always just place a piece of washi tape one inch from my needle on the right so that I can run it along the tape. And that's kind of a good seam guide. Or on my Christmas list, I put a magnetic seam guide on there. Hopefully I'll get that for Christmas and then I'll show it to you. I'll link that in the notes. Okay, so there's my one inch stitching line. The last one is gonna be an inch and a half away from the edge. So a half an inch away from this stitching line. And that will form your casing for your drawstring. Okay, that part is done. So the next thing you're gonna do, if you can still see, hopefully you can still see your crease that you ironed right here. If you can't, then go ahead and just go press another crease halfway mark. But I can still see mine. So I have these sharp little scissors and we're gonna make the holes for our drawstring. Now, if this bothers you that I'm leaving them raw, then you can, before you sew all of your things together, you can create buttonholes. Use your pattern piece to measure out, make a buttonhole here and here, and also here and here. Or you can install eyelets. However, I find that fussy for such a little craft project like this. And I did this for all the ones I made for the dancers and it was just fine. So what you're gonna do is mark, let's see, let me get a pencil half an inch from the crease over here and then again over here. So half inch from that middle mark and then again on this side, half an inch and half an inch. And I'm going to just cut those open. Making sure I'm only cutting through my outside fabric. So you're putting the holes in the outside of the pouch. So I'm gonna, I drew it away from the lining piece like this, and I'm just putting slits in the outside. Not all the way to the stitching. It's maybe, well, you can gauge, maybe three eighths of an inch big. So I'm gonna do that with all four of these marks I just made. And then I'll show you how to make sure it doesn't ravel. And pull the front away from the lining make a small snip, and then continue to open it like you would a buttonhole. Okay, so I have my four holes made. I'm going to use Fray Check. This is a product, it's sort of like clear nail polish, but it's just for this kind of thing and it dries clear, like clear nail polish dries kind of crusty most of the time. So if you don't have this, clear nail polish will do, but I suggest you get some for your sewing room because you'll use it all the time for the ends of ribbons, for any holes you find on anything. It's really useful. My daughter has one in her ballet bag in case her tights rip. So I'm just gonna fray check the entire hole. And this has prevented any of these pouches from raveling, no matter how much my, daughter's has my daughter has used hers, it still looks fine. So that's why I feel like dealing with fussy buttonholes is unnecessary. Okay, I'm just gonna let that dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna use my cord. You can use ribbon. I'm hoping I have enough of this. Maybe I should measure. Oh, good, I do. You need two 24 inch lengths of this. If you're using ribbon, try to use grow grain ribbon. It tends to be sturdier. Okay, let me wait for this to dry. Okay, that's dry enough for me. Okay, I'm gonna tie a knot in this end. So a drawstring pouch, when you want the drawstrings to be on both sides, so it closes like this and not just on one side, this is how that works. I feel like because I've taught this to kids, it was very, this was very counterintuitive for them. 
Okay, I tied a knot in this end so I have somewhere to stick my safety pin. So the first string needs to go in this one and all the way around to this one, not just halfway, it needs to go all the way around. So just insert it here, get past the knot. There we go. And draw it through past the next set of holes. Oops, I don't want to come out that hole. <laughs> Behind those holes, all the way around to the other side. Making sure you don't pull the other end out, then you'll have to start all over. So it's gonna to start to bunch up. And here I am all the way around. I'm gonna bring it out this hole. Unfasten my safety pin, untie this knot. If you can and retie these ends together. Okay, then I can trim this. Now, the other drawstring come over here to these other holes and it also needs to go all the way around. So, not here, not too tight, because remember you have to get it out. <laughs> okay, this one is a little bit trickier because you're already strung You've already strung through the other side and it's already bunched up. So just work it through the best that you can. When you come to this other set of holes, just work it behind them. Okay, here I am to the other side. I'm gonna come back out this hole and repeat. Unpin, untie, and tie these two ends together. If you're using ribbon, you'll want to use that fray check on the ribbon ends too. But these just easily fray open. Okay, now it's pretty much done. You just want to open and close it a few times until it opens and closes easily. So the drawstrings just need to sort of arrange themselves to live inside in unison with each other. And then you have your perfect little drawstring pouch. So I can tell they're gathering up more on that side. Just wanna even them out. And because you only made them 24 inches, the drawstring pouch stays open just like this. It doesn't open all the way flat. If you wanted to make something that did open all the way flat, like one of those makeup bags, you could make it a bigger circle. Have you seen those makeup bags that have like elastic down here on the bottom? So you lay it out flat and then there's your elastic makeup brush holders and things. Those are neat. You would just want to make a bigger circle and then you would want to make your drawstring big enough to where this could open all the way out. But for my purposes, I wouldn't want that because if I was going to put my Wonder Clips in here, I'll link these. They are super handy. You can use them in place of pins sometimes. Then I wouldn't want it to open all the way flat. I would want it to stay partially closed. So here we go. Now I have a new little case for my Wonder Clips. I hope you liked this. If you did, be sure and like it and subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends. And if you make one of these, be sure and show me. You can tag me on Instagram at pincutsew. And let's see, last thing, you can go to my blog, pincutsewstudio.com and check out all my patterns on there and all the free sewing content and inspiration I have on there. And if you have an idea for another project or video that you want to learn how to make, please, oops, please let me know and I will do my best to oblige. We'll see you later.